This undrafted shooting guard is a rising star. Strokes, jokes for everybody. We felt early on that he was a culture fit. Being in that culture, it just screams max. Growing up in an athletic family, sports was the norm. I was always a pretty good athlete growing up. I think a lot of that had to do with playing with the older kids all the time. We never saw him as the little kid. He just like fit right in. From high school to college to the NBA, he always had to fight for his spot. There were definitely many challenges that I didn't expect along the way, which ended up helping me a lot in my career. He's always been insatiable about his work ethic. Be dogs, be hungry, show these people why we should have been drafted. But here in Miami, it has finally paid off. He's just worked so hard, it's endless. For him. Max Struess again from three. They better call the fire department. That net's on fire. I see myself being a guy that's known as one of the best shooters in the league. Inside the heat, Max Struess. Hello and welcome to Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson. Max Struess is in his second season with the Miami Heat and is proving to be a valuable piece to this team's success. His path to the NBA and his current home in South Florida is one that is built on hard work, determination, and a will to never give up. For him, that all started growing up in Chicago alongside his older brother and sister. Max was consistently around sports and played it all but basketball became his passion and would take him places he could have never imagined. So let's start with young Max. Growing up in Chicago, sports is the tapestry of your life. That's really all I know. Like you said, everybody in my family is, has been an athlete or still is an athlete. Max would do this thing where he was little where he'd wake up in the morning in one outfit, like uh, an NFL jersey. And then at dinner time, he'd be wearing like an NBA jersey. Like he was constantly like living to entertain. Max was the benefit of an older sister and older brother who were athletes and parents who were athletes. Our lives revolved around sports. Um, all of us played multiple sports. Max being the youngest in the athletic Struess family, first learned about sports by tagging along with his older brother and sister. He's always followed along through neighborhood games, and then through the team sports. We were all older, so when we all played, we never saw him as the little kid running around. He just like fit right in. He was always that kid on the side of the baseball field that's hitting the ball over the fence and like interrupting the game or like in the basketball court, like wanting to, you know, come into practice and wanting to be part of things. Growing up, it wasn't, it wasn't video games. It wasn't staying inside for me. It was uh, being outside with my brother or sister. My brother's six years older than me and my sister's four years older. You know, they were always out with their friends and I just wanted to be a part of it. As Max got older, he found his own athletic ability and played baseball, football, and basketball. But upon entering high school, one sport began to rise above the rest. I was always like a pretty good athlete growing up. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with you know, playing with the older kids all the time. He was pretty good at all three. He did seem to enjoy basketball more. Our baseball coach never made Max make a decision between basketball and baseball because he would have picked basketball. Getting into high school, my freshman year, I was, I was pretty small. Uh, I think everybody started hitting puberty and everybody started growing up and I was just like looking at him and you know, like, when's my time gonna come? But uh, I played three sports and I ended up breaking my collarbone playing football. Um, and that took away two weeks of basketball. So that kind of cut it for me after that one. Take us through the progression, the four years. By the time you were done at uh, Amos Alonzo Stag uh, High School, you, you were the player of the year. So there was, there, there was growth. I was on varsity as a freshman, but I didn't play. And then sophomore year, played a lot. And then as I grew personally, um, height-wise, my basketball career just kept getting better. Well, his senior year of high school, he had a really great year. Uh, he shot the ball really well. He was very athletic. Being away at college and then coming back, and you're like, whoa, where'd you learn to jump like that? Football, baseball, basketball. When did basketball rise to the top of your list? Though? Going into my senior year, basically, started to grow a little bit more, and uh, that was like the sport that really was the most fun to me. I just knew basketball was what I wanted to do. Max's rise in basketball became evident, especially to his family, who was his constant support. 
when we got our house, we built a side court on a basketball court on the side, and we made it 50 by 30. And he wanted to shoot three-pointed shots all the time. There was no excuses for not being good because they were out there all the time in the driveway. I think he shot like six threes in a game, which for high school, that's a lot. It was unbelievable how good he was at that, and, but he practiced all the time. To have him be as involved in my sports as he was in my older brother's um, career was really incredible of a support system and when he kind of picked up the passion to really shoot every single day like I would then start rebounding for him so I thought that was like the coolest transition. What were your thoughts about college at that point and where you were going to fit? You know my whole senior year I was I was trying to be a division one basketball player um, that was my dream you know I grew up watching the Big Ten uh, network and you know that's what I really wanted to I wanted to play in the Big Ten and, and do that but that opportunity didn't come, so uh, when it was just the D2 schools that were recruiting me, it was uh, it really came down to, you know, this is what it's going to be, and I ended up going to Lewis, and it ended up being the best thing for me. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Max Struess was a basketball star his senior year of high school and wanted to continue on his basketball journey in college. But without any Division I offers, he decided to stay local and go to Lewis University. His older brother, Marty, was a graduate who played basketball there. So for Max, it was a place of comfort and familiarity. Your older brother Marty's already playing at Lewis University, so you probably did you get a little taste of the university before he said, yeah, "Yeah, that's where I need to go." Or was it just Marty's there? I'm good. By the time I was a senior, he was gone already, but I knew what I was getting myself into because of him. Oh, I, he used to come to all my games at Lewis, and you'd see him, you know, in the crowd, and you'd see him after games, and then I'm done there, and okay, now he's gonna come in. You know, he had a huge role. Um, throughout my whole entire life, but in my college decision especially. Tell me about those two years though, and what you gained before heading. I think it was just a huge confidence booster. You know, my freshman year, I was uh, started every game uh, on a team that was filled with a lot of seniors. My friend was the athletic director, and I remember him calling me the first day of practice. And Max was a freshman on a team with a bunch of juniors and seniors, and he called me and said, he said, Max is the best player on the floor. And I'm like, come on. He goes, no, no. And after the season, I was like, what else am I really going to do here? So I kind of just figured why not keep challenging myself and take it to the next level. In doing so, you kept it in the family as well. Your mother in the Hall of Fame at DePaul. You're a Chicagoland kid. Was it inevitable or were there conversations that had to be had as you were coming up to, to this decision? It definitely wasn't DePaul at first. I didn't really want to go there because honestly the, the program wasn't very successful at the time, but at the end of the day it was staying close to home and I thought it would be a unique challenge um, for me to you know, try to build that program back up. Could you take us to the day, the first day that you put on that uniform and stepped on the floor if it was at home and, yeah. and what it meant to you? It was really cool. It was my first Division One game, but I had a bunch of family there. Um, it was a moment I'll never forget, and just kind of all came full circle. And uh, you know, going up to DePaul games and whatnot growing up, it was like, oh, I'm really here doing this. Well, it went full circle, but then it went on a whole nother plane because you guys were able to turn things around. What did it mean to you to be able to be a part of, of that alteration for the program? It was a challenge. It was, it was very challenging. You know, whenever you're trying to change a culture and, and change an environment from a losing place to a winning place, it, it's not easy. And there are definitely many challenges that I didn't expect along the way, which ended up helping me a lot in my career. So I was an assistant volleyball coach there his senior year. And I could safely say that he lived in the gym. He lived in the weight room. He lived in the training room. Like, he took care of every single aspect of his game. Is that word insatiable? Uh, and he's always been insatiable, not only about his work ethic, but about the about the pace that he go about his work. And and that's been for me only reserved for a very few people. And Max is is at the top of that list. It went from like this nice story when he first started playing of oh, here's this Division II kid, and then by his senior year, 
every team is main focus defensively is on how do we stop Max. At the end of the day, we had the first winning season in 14 years, and you know we made a postseason appearance in, in, a, in a smaller tournament. But uh, you know, leaving there, I was I was happy with how it how it how it went and happy with my experience. Max's time in DePaul left a significant imprint on the school. In November 2021, he returned to his alma mater for Max Struess Night. That was a special moment, special night. Um, another one that I'll never forget. The fans were great, and I think that's one of the things Max really enjoyed was how much the fans really appreciated him, you know? And I think what um, really put it over the top for me was to see the Miami Heat team come and support him. DePaul for him and his family is family. So it's always been in, in his blood. So for them to reciprocate that by honoring him, I thought was, was really big. I mean, sometimes you forget where you came from. And, you know, for DePaul, it allowed that connection to stay true to his heart. I thank DePaul for that and to have everybody there from the heat, uh, my family, and just everything that they, they helped us out with was, was a super special experience. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. After an impressive college career in his hometown of Chicago, Max Struess believed that he had what it took to be in the NBA. His dream would soon come true, but in an untraditional way. His name was not called on draft night, but Max was determined to find his way, and it would all start for him in Boston. So you went undrafted coming out of DePaul, but you signed on with the Celtics for the Summer League, later as a two-way player. How did that element, that transition feel for you? It's still, you've made it. Yeah. Maybe not with all the flair of draft night, but you've made it. You know, I think it's fitting. The whole way my professional career has gone, I think it just fits my story and who I am as a, as a basketball player. Not get my name called on, on draft night, but thank you to the, the Celtics for giving me an opportunity um, to come in on a two-way. Taco kicks it to Struess in the corner. Another. That's why they like this kid. It was a fun experience just because it was my first NBA thing, so I was just happy to be there, really. When he wasn't drafted, it gave him the proper motivation to start the journey to, to uh, become an NBA player. That journey would quickly shift, however, when Max was released from the Celtics right before the season began. When he got released, it was uh, kind of heartbroken, but they had called us and said, we got to deal with the Bulls, which was good to hear. That opened up a path for you to head to your hometown yeah. team as a two-way player, Chicago Bulls. Uh, your first game, November 22nd, 2019. I know because I was there. Uh, it was against the Miami Heat. What do you recall about that game? I remember every single every single moment of it. Obviously, because I scored my first points. Um, I got an A1. I think Tyler fouled me, if I, if I recall. Max Truss on a two-way contract. Draws the foul. When I first got here, I showed Kelly Olenek the, the picture, because I was like, there's me doing a layup, and Kelly's like, kind of blowing past me and, and whatnot. But it was like Tyler, Kelly, K Nunn. Uh, Duncan, they were all on the court, so now I'm teammates with them. It was, it was, it was pretty crazy that that's, that's how it worked out. You're a part of it now, sorry. Yep. Uh, you would, as the smell likes to say, you inherit the history, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Adversity comes your way in the midst of all this. Uh, you, you rip up your ACL in a G League game, you're sidelined for an extended period of time. What did you learn about yourself and what it takes to not let that rip you apart, but build you stronger? Honestly, it was a blessing in disguise, though. I think I wouldn't say I needed it, but having that time off and being able to reflect on your career and um, who you are as a basketball player and, and who you are as a person, honestly, because it's the, kind of the first time you're you know, not a basketball player, and, and that's kind of taken away from you. I knew the negative impact that an injury can have on you, especially when you're out for a very long time. You have to be wired differently to be able to make it through something like that and still be able to take every day in its fullest. It was hard at first, and it's a long process, but I tried to take a positive outlook at it and you know, take each day, day by day, and just having everybody near me and, and, and loving me and supporting me through those times was phenomenal. I wouldn't be here without any one of them. Well, you bounce back. 
and you bounced to paradise. Yeah. 2020, you, you joined the Miami Heat on a two-way. Uh, what did that mean to you? Everything that you had heard about the Miami Heat, how did that hit you in reality that you were a part of the organization? Yeah, you know, coming after, it was after a finals run too. Uh, you know, when I watched the games, it was, how do you not want to play here? And how do you not want to play with guys like Bam and Jimmy? Here's Butler, off to Struess, fires again, kaboom again. Max Struess, what a night for him. But making the decision to come to Miami wasn't as easy as it seemed. As a homebody, Max wanted to stay in Chicago, but thanks to some sound advice, he made the choice to join a team with similar values to his own. My agent actually was the one who kind of bade me come here and it was like, look, this is gonna be the best thing for your career. Being in that culture that everybody talks about and he talks about, it just screams Max. The system that they run, especially for a guy that can shoot the ball like me. It honestly set up perfectly. Max Struess fires a three. Max Struess again from three. You better call the fire department. That net's on fire. Everything that they're about, I'm about as a person and a player. Uh, you know, hard work, being dedicated to your craft, and, and you know, just outworking people. He's worked so hard, and he's had that chip on his shoulder to get where he's at. It's still kind of hard to believe that he is where he's at. Struess with a hammer. Well, the best dunk of the season for a Heat player. Every step of the way, I've just continued to just outwork and try to just beat every single person in the gym and just try to be the best player I can possibly be. And being at a place in Miami like this that really values that, I couldn't ask for anything better. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. In his first season in Miami, Max Strews earned a two-way contract and exhibited flashes of greatness. But in Summer League, he showed what he could do when he really was given an opportunity. That performance led to his first multi-year contract, and he continues to give us a taste of Struess' juice every night. Be dogs, be hungry, show these people why we should have been drafted. Next score win. Looks like a clear out for Struess. Yeah. He wants the three. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Why not, Max Struess? Have yourself a ball game. August 2021, middle of a very successful summer league. You signed a two-year contract with the Heat. Talk to us about that commitment from a team for the very first time. They could have went out and got anybody for them to show the trust and, and belief in me that you know they, they think I can help this team win it was huge. Struess goes right by Joseph. What a great play by Struess. Don't pigeonhole him as just a three-point shooter. That man's got skills. What's been most enjoyable about being able to step in and step up. We've been winning so much. That's been the most fun to me. Mm -hmm. We all just enjoy each other so much. And you know, when one guy goes down, it's, it really is this next man mentality that we talk about. We really believe in that. Struess again. Kaboom again. Struess on fire. Struess has been hot. Fires away. Knocks it down again. Wow, what a three-pointer for Struess. At the end of the day, when it really comes down to in playoff time, we're going to need every single person. We're all prepared for that. We're getting great experience during the season to be ready for those moments. I've not made it a secret how much I enjoy Stroops Juice. Stroops Juice Maximus. We got fans making up juice boxes. Yeah. Which, by the way, okay, get the agent on the phone. This we got to yeah, get this it out. done. Just make it sweet. Yeah. It's got to be sweet and light. <laughs> Uh, what do you think about that particular moniker? <laughs> it's a little cringy at first, uh, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but it's fun. He lets it loose. Shroops, jokes for everybody. I enjoy the support from everybody here and all the fans in Miami that are starting to be a fan of mine. Another fan is Jimmy Butler, who shows it in a way only Jimmy can. Don't ask me about Max. Don't do it. It's Max's fault, I blame everything on Max. You know, he got lucky, made a couple shots tonight. I'm not impressed, I'm not. He doesn't like me for some reason. He can portray that he's giving you a hard time, but there is a real true dedication to teammates that only you know once you're with him, so you gotta let us. I respect Jimmy a, a ton. I still remember my first day here coming in on a Exhibit 10, and you know, usually the vets don't talk to you, but uh, he came right up to me and introduced himself and uh, wanted to know about me. And, Ever since then, our relationship has just kept building, and he's a friend of mine now and somebody to help me and guide me through my journey. Corey Joseph took it right away and then crashed in the shoes. Welcome to the culture. Spo was super clear about joining this organization. 
It's not for everybody. So why is it for you? It's exactly how I've built my whole career and, and how I've became a professional. Every bump in the road along the way, I've, I've always found a way to you know, make it better and um, come out on the other side of it. The main thing has always been the main thing, and that's just been continue to work hard and keep your head down and, and believe in yourself that you belong at this level. We felt early on that he was a culture fit. He's another guy that's really put in the time when no one was watching. Usually two hours before practice would start. He's always first one in, last one out, you know, getting extra shots up. All the time you put in, it's really valued here. And that's why I respect the most about the Miami Heat. They see you put in the work and, and they're gonna reward you. It's nice to see that your hard work does pay off. Max Struess with 32 points. What a success story, give a 305. I just think he was made to be on that roster. Being in a place that understands everybody has a different journey and using that as a strength is the perfect place for him. And he just doesn't quit uh, in anything. I'm super proud. I'm done trying to like predict what I think is gonna happen with him. I have no idea. I just know that I'm not gonna bet against him. What do you want? for yourself as a player going forward, and what should be the true goal for this team? I mean, the sky's the limit for this team. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any reason we shouldn't be talking about a championship. I think we have all the pieces in play to do that. But for me personally, I think keep being a consistent guy off the bench and do whatever the team needs. He's just worked so hard. And it's the, uh, it's endless for him, you know? Max Struess has set a new career high, nine triples for Miami tonight. I want to be in this league for a very long time. I see myself doing that and being a guy that's known as one of the best shooters in the league and, and a very good basketball player when I'm all of a sudden done. It is easy to see why Max Struess is made for the Miami Heat culture. His work ethic and willingness to do whatever it takes to win is the reason why he is thriving on this team. There's no doubt that he will be part of the continued success of the Heat as they look to compete for a championship. And we all are lucky enough to witness his journey along the way. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Inside the Heat. I am Jason Jackson.